Good morning, everyone. It's a great joy to be with you this morning for this Eucharist, which is a very special celebration today. It's actually, we come together in many ways as a preface to the Episcopal ordinations that will be celebrated on the Feast of St. Bartholomew, the 24th of August, coming up. So in the context of this liturgy, our two new bishops-elect, Bishop Reed and Bishop O'Connell, will make their oaths of allegiance and their profession of faith, and we will bless the insignia of the office of bishop, the, the rings, the croziers, and the mitres that will be given to them as part of their ordination ceremony. So it's a great a joy to, to be a part of this, and today we are celebrating the Mass of the Sacred Heart because this is the year of mercy, and the Sacred Heart is one of the most powerful symbols of God's mercy in our lives. The scriptures today speak to us about the wonderful parable of the prodigal son. This parable was actually given to us by Christ because of the Pharisees. The Pharisees were always criticizing Jesus' eating habits. Not that he was eating too much cholesterol or too many carbohydrates, but Jesus liked to eat with sinners and publicans, and the Pharisees did not like that. So Jesus, in response to their criticism of his eating habits, gives us three beautiful parables. The lost sheep, the lost coins, and the lost son. And in this wonderful parable of the lost son, the protagonist is really the father. We call the parable the prodigal son. But it's the father who represents for us the merciful father who is always anxious to forgive, always anxious to receive us home again. The story is the story of a man who wants to make his life without the father, without God. And when he does that, he thinks that he's going to enjoy all this freedom and be having fun. He discovers that the fun and the money run out. And he begins to long for the security and the wonderful things that he had enjoyed in his father's house. And so he determines that he is going to return home. And when he does that, we see how the father is so anxious to receive him. He's waiting, looking, hoping that the son will return. And when he does, he rushes out, he embraces him, kisses him, and invites him home again. He puts a ring on his finger to remind him of his own dignity. He's a member of the family. He puts shoes, sandals on his feet because he doesn't want him to be a slave. The slaves wear barefoot. He was a member of the family. His dignity is restored. And this is what God's mercy is about, receiving us home and showing us his love in so many different ways. The naming of new bishops is, in many ways, a gesture of God's mercy and love. Jesus wants to take care of his flock, and so he sends us shepherds. And today we celebrate that mercy, that special mercy of God who is sending us two men to be bishops, to be shepherds in his church. We are going to bless, as I said, the insignia of the bishops. I just want to digress for a moment on the bishop's ring, which is probably the most uh, characteristic uh, symbol of the bishop. It symbolizes that the bishop is married to the church. It's like a wedding ring. I wear the ring that my father gave me when I was ordained a bishop, and it has my motto on it, Cod cumque dixerit facite, the last words of the Blessed Virgin in the Gospel. Do whatever he tells you. 
which he said at the wedding feast of Cana. Now, the rings that uh, Bishop Bob and Bishop Bark will be given have an image of Our Lady of Guadalupe on them. And, but it's a very special image of Our Lady of Guadalupe that I discovered a couple of years ago when one of the Augustinians from, uh, from the diocese was sent over to Japan, and he was there for a celebration in one of their uh, parishes. And he brought back a gift to me, which is called a fumie. When there was a terrible persecution of the church in Japan during uh, the 1600s, when uh, the Japanese were being evangelized for the first time after St. Francis Xavier had arrived there, this terrible persecution broke out, and the way that they identified the Catholics was that outside of every village they would put this medallion on the ground that had a picture either of Christ or the Blessed Mother. They called them a fumie. And then all the villagers had to line up and walk over this image and step on it as to prove that they were not Christians. And those who refused were then martyred. But what struck me about the fumie that they brought to me is that it was an image of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Her appearance would have happened just decades before these martyrdoms, but there were missionaries from Mexico who were evangelizing in Japan, and so the Japanese, to, when they wanted a p picture of the Blessed Mother, ended up using Our Lady of Guadalupe. So the ring, I think, is a very, very symbolic because it reminds us of Mary's love for us, but it also reminds us that we are part of the Church of Martyrs, that we must be witnesses of the faith. In the scriptures, when they choose a bishop to take the place of Judas, they say they're looking for a man who's a witness of the resurrection. Our bishops must give witness, and sometimes it means even to the point of suffering for our faith. So today, all of us are here to enjoy this moment uh, as we prepare for the ordination of our new bishops, to bless their insignia, but also to pray for them and their ministry, that they will be faithful witnesses of the resurrection, that they will be able to endure the hardships of the gospel that St. Paul speaks to us about, and so that they will be holy and good shepherds in our church.